Oh, check out this old rotary hoe. What a beast. It's a Howard Gem. I think it's about 50 years old. The fellow who owns it said it's just too hard to start and uh, a bit heavy for him to manoeuvre around. So he said I can take it away and try and get it running. It's been sitting here for about 15 years. It hasn't run in that time so it's probably going to need a bit of work. It's a single cylinder petrol engine. Jesus, that shed's falling apart. Three speed gearbox and reverse. Everything seems to move, so that's a good sign. Other blades look to be in good condition. Plenty of meat left on those. Oh, yep, they move. Good. Basically a two-wheeled tractor with blades. So it's going to be a fun machine if I can get it going. So that's a Kohler engine. K30. Got a few oil leaks there. Let's see if I can get it to turn over. Oh yeah, it does turn over. It's got a bit of compression there, so it might be right. Hopefully. Seems to be holding it. I'll try the other side. Oh well, both the tyres seem to be holding air. That's good. Should be able to move it a bit easier now. That muffler's seen better days. It's going to be loud if it goes. Take these guards off, take that off, and try and get that recoiling again, and then see if I can get it to spark. The splines are worn off this starting mechanism. That could be a problem. So it looks like the engine's been running um, while these teeth have been out and it's, it's just worn down that alloy so that's not ideal. First of all I'll try and get this so it's recoiling properly. Basically just winding the spring up a bit tighter. Oh, that's better. Oh, it 
does seem to be working, so it might be okay. I don't really want to have to buy another one of those. That wouldn't be helping the cooling. Jammed up with grass. I think it should have more compression than that. Unless a valve was stuck open or something. That spark plug seems to be jammed in there. It's uh, like it's been cross-threaded at some stage. It's very tight, so that's not good. So it looks like it's maybe had the wrong spark plug put in there at some stage and it's stripped the thread and that spark plug is actually broken as well. I'll whip that head off and see what's going on. That ball looks okay. It's a bit, there's a bit of carbon there. You can see that valve popping up slightly on the compression stroke. I think there must be an automatic decompression system in there. You can see that valve's just slightly up. You can see that spark plug hole is a bit of a mess there. It looks like it's been leaking. Possibly a warped head. Either that or it just wasn't done up tight enough. This area here next to the exhaust valve that hasn't been sealing properly. And it looks like the exhaust gases have been coming out of there. Because that spark plug thread is so badly damaged, you can see the top half of it is totally stripped out. Um, I could try and clean that up with a thread chaser, but looks like there'd only be about four millimeters of threads holding it on. So I think what I'll do is just drill it out, re-tap it, and put an insert in there, and that'll just solve the problem. So I'll clean the threads up with acetone just to make sure there's no oil in there because I'll be using Loctite on the insert so that it doesn't move. Clean the insert as well. That might have had oil on it at the factory. That's nice and clean so I'll put some Loctite on there now. High temperature Loctite. So that should lock it in place and I will put some grease on the inside because I want the spark plug to let go and not the insert. So a little bit of grease on the inside, lock tight on the outside and that should do the job. So we'll get that nice and tight in there. So 
seems to be seated all the way down. Yep, that looks good. We'll let that Loctite set for a while, and then I'll pull that spark plug out. Alright, so that Loctite's set. I should be able to pull that spark plug out, and the insert should stay in there, so we'll see how we go. I think it's... Yep, that's looking good. Spark plug's coming out, and the insert is staying in. That's good, it's nicely seated in there. The thread is now going all the way through, and that insert is locked in there, so that shouldn't ever move. All sorted, so we'll just get a new spark plug for that, and it should be good. So you need to use high temperature Loctite for that, because if you just use um, standard Loctite, the heat of the engine is going to break it down, so the insert could end up coming out. Because some of those head bolts were loose, the head may have warped a little bit, so I've got a flat piece of glass here. I'll just put some fine grit sandpaper on there and um, just give that a bit of a scrape to uh, take any high points off. Let's put a bit of oil on there. You can see all of this right around there. It's had a good sanding, but this part here where the exhaust gases were coming out is still a bit low. So I'll just do a bit more. It's starting to look a bit better. There's still a bit of a low point there. Yeah, I think that'll do me. Pretty shiny all the way around now. I'll be using this copper gasket cement. Spray that on both sides of the gasket and um, it should seal it up nicely. Really should replace the heat gasket, but I don't really want to spend any money on it until I know it's going to run, so uh, the old gasket will be fine with the spray. All right for an old rotary hoe. Just using a torque wrench here. I'll take it down to about 15 at first, and then I'll take it all the way to 28 foot-pounds. They're all torqued down to about 28 foot-pound, nice and evenly, so that should be good. Let's see if there's any oil in that engine. Oh, well, it does have oil. It's fairly dirty, so I'll drain that out and uh, put some fresh stuff in it. That's been in there for a while. Black as tar. It is turning, but the teeth seem to be slipping on the in the spline there, so it's making a lot of noise. And I don't know how long that's going to last like that. All right, so that's a new spark plug. I will just see if there's any spark there. Now that's a nice, healthy spark. Um, pretty yellow looking fuel so I'll flush that out of there get all the air locks out that 
pump doesn't seem to be working either. Nothing coming out of there. That's just a little spring loaded pump. A couple of valves here. That valve could be stuck there, I think. This one's sitting so long. Yeah, that was. I think that check valve was stuck down there. Let's see what that does now. I can hear that working now, so I think those valves were just stuck from sitting for so long. That should be okay now. Aha! Those valves were just stuck. That's pumping now. Sweet. No wonder it wasn't running. Multiple issues. It's not coming into the carburetor bowl. We might have a stuck float valve in there because it's not getting through to the carb. Ah oh, yeah, you can see the problem there. There's chocker full with crud. Should be able to see through that. That might actually be rubber. Yeah, you can see through that now. Much better. Aha! Uh -huh. Success! That's coming through there now, no problems. All sorted. Looking well. All right, that bowl should be filled up now. That's just slipping in there on the spline, so. I can't really get a decent pull on it. I think you can start these from here as well. There's like a kickstart lever, so I might keep an eye out for one of those too. Hey boy. Hey buddy. Ah! Little b <laughs> Right, I'm going to try and make a crank handle for it. I'll use these parts to cobble something together. I know the uh, shaft is this size, so I'll just make up a socket around that. And um, maybe something like that. Weld a piece in there. Make up a bit of a socket that goes over the, over the shaft. And also need to attach it to the frame. So I think I can use this internal diameter. And make up some sort of mount for it. That fits quite snugly in there, so I'll use that as the mount to the frame. That's the plan anyway.
bit of work. There we go. Swing it around and that'll stay up there. that carburetor might be causing some issues so it's leaking fuel um, this throttle valve is worn out and um, the corrosion around the main jet won't be helping either so I just got another one they're only $20 so I'll pop that on and see if it helps Jets should be around two, two turns out each. not really running it's, it's coughing and farting so it seems to be pushing fuel back out of the carburetor so I'll check the valve clearances behind this uh, panel here reed valve type thing all right so we'll get a feeler gauge in there and see what sort of clearance there is the intake valve should be 0 0.01. Got the workshop manual on the phone here. Crank the engine around a little bit. That opens up. That's 0 0.012, and it's fitting in there quite easily. So I need to wind that back down, close that gap up a bit. Zero one two doesn't fit in there now. So I'll get the zero one oh. Still quite loose in there. So the clearances obviously were a bit high, I think. So that's bang on zip zero one zero of an inch. So that's pretty good. 017 doesn't even fit in there, so I think that's wound in a bit tight actually. So that's way too tight. That's spot on now. So we've got 018 and 010 on the inlet. Hopefully that makes a difference. That's even feeling better already, like it's harder to crank now, so that's got to be a good sign. It shows it's got more compression now. I think that exhaust valve wasn't fully closing. So fingers crossed, we will go now. Let's try that out. Because that, the end of that exhaust is blowing off, I've made up a little cap there for it so it, the exhaust gas has come down. That should quieten it down quite a bit, I think. It's an old hubcap off a um, Toyota Hilux. That should do the job. We'll see if that's going to start now.
noisy. Oh, they worked really well. It's bloody noisy though. There's a few things I have to do to improve it. Uh, maybe get a better muffler for there. Um, possibly wrap the pipe around, bring it out the other side and put a proper muffler there. That's just a bit hard on the ears, that one. It is missing a blade on that side, so I'll find a replacement for that. Apart from that though, it cuts pretty good. That did pretty well in that uh, hard grass. It's tromped it up nicely. It's fairly easy going through there actually. It was a bit harder on this side with all the roots and um, from those old stumps I pulled out a while ago. But it's, uh, it's true through it alright. So we've got a plant to wee garden in there now. Needs a bit of a rake just to get it sort of even again. That's done a good job.